Sunday of Easter. During the worship, you may feel the presence of God and the Holy Spirit make a way your heart and mind so that you may worship God in spirit and in truth. Let us prepare our mind and soul for the worship today.
Joyce Howard is guys for me. How are you guys? And I, I know we had a birthday this week because Carolyn told me there was 38, right?
I saw him this morning on the way come church this morning, so he looks better. He looks better. So thank you for your prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, as we gather in worship today, we come before you with a heart filled with gratitude for the blessing and joy in our lives. We thank you for the moment of celebration and the love that surrounds us each day. Lord, we lift up prayers for peace in our world. We are deeply concerned about the conflict and war, especially praying for between Ukraine and Russia, between Israel and Hamas, additionally the tension between Israel and Iran. May your hands of reconciliation guide the leaders of these nations for a resolution that brings lasting peace and stability to the countries affected by violence and unrest. We lift up our leaders both locally and globally. Grant them wisdom, compassion, and strength to govern with justice, integrity, and help them to lead their nations towards a path of peace and unity. We pray for the upcoming General Conference of the United Methodist Church in Charlotte, North Carolina, where delegates from all over the world will gather next Tuesday. Grant wisdom, discipline, and unity to all those who will be in attendance. May your spirit guide their discussions and decisions, leading them to outcomes that further your kingdom reflect your will for the church. We also pray for all those who have been affected by tragedies and disasters around the world. Comfort the hearts of those who are mourn and bring healing to, a, to the brokenness in the community. Also, we pray for those who are suffering in body, mind, and soul. We lift up those who are facing a coming surgery and re recuperating. We lift up their names. Kathy Cagle, Kwadin Huang, Melvin Hamilton, Todd Mosher. May they find refuge and strength in your loving embrace and experience your healing touch. For those who have lost their loved ones, we ask for your covering presence to surround them during this difficult time giving them strength, hope, in the midst of their grief. We lift up the family parish. As we embark on this new week, we seek your guidance and direction in all that we do. Lead us along paths of righteousness and help us to be beacons of your light and love in a world filled with darkness. We pray in the name of 
Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who has for us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Thank you. 
cross for our sins, but we focus on being witnesses to the resurrected Jesus who conquered and defeats the death. In today's scripture, Mary Magdalene stood outside of the tomb crying. What happened to her? Mary, who was the first to arrive at the tomb, so that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she went back to Peter and the other disciple and reported them to reported them that someone had been taken Jesus' body from the tomb. Peter and the other disciple ran to the tomb where they saw only the strips of white, the linen, and the folded face cloth. Then they returned to their home. But Mary, she stood outside of the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent down to look into the tomb and saw two angels seated where Jesus' body had been. The angels asked her why she was crying. She told them that someone had stolen or moved Jesus' body. As she turned around, Jesus stood there and asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? She thought he was a gardener. So she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. Then she recognized Jesus. This story tells us that Mary did not recognize Jesus at first. Why? Because she was looking for a dead Jesus. Not a living Jesus. That's why she could not recognize Jesus, even though he was right in front of her. When is the time for you that you do not recognize Jesus, even though he's right in front of you? or with you. Isn't it a reason that if you're looking for a dead Jesus instead of living Jesus? There are times when unexpected things happen or we receive bad news in our lives, such as health crisis or a medical emergency, loss of a loved one, financial setbacks, or a job loss, natural disasters such as hurricane, earthquake, or a flood. Relationship difficulties or breakup, legal issues or conflict, accidents or injuries, personal challenges such as depression, anxiety, or addiction, disappointments, or failures and various aspects of life, and so on. You can name it. As you know, I had a medical emergency in my family. My father passed out of the metal on the way home. He had a cardiac arrest, but thankfully, 
summons a patni performed CPR quickly after he collapsed. Foolish seems to indicate that someone performed the CPR after he collapsed. <coughs> he was surrounded by the fog when it happened, so we could not tell who performed the CPR on him. However, the doctor and we guessed that his time of cardiac arrest was not over five minutes after it occurred. This was because he woke up and opened his eyes and could move his body three days later in the ICU after the incident. When I heard the news of my father's condition, my first thought was that I needed to go to South Korea, where my father is, and be with my mom. So I informed the two SPRC chairperson about the family emergency situation and received their support for my journey with my parents to South Korea. During the journey, God gave me three messages. First of all, be peace as a peacemaker in myself and in my family. The second one was be thankful. And the last one was be united. After the journey in South Korea, I realized that the three messages came from Psalm 46, 10, A. Be still and know that I am God. Be still, know that God is God. Be still was the key in even be was the key. When I'm still and know God is God, God allows me to be peaceful, thankful, and united. During the flight to the South Korea, God gave me the first message, be peace. That is from Jeremiah 29, verse 11. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. There are plans for peace, not disaster, to give you a future filled with hope. So I have a confidence about my father because God's peace has been with me and God has a plan for peace, not disaster, to give us a future filled with hope. When I had a devotion with my mother on the day when I arrived at my parents' house, my mother had a safe message from God. She had a confidence about God's plans for good and peace. Even though it looked hopeless in our situation and circumstances, God's plans for us are peace and to give us future filled with hope because God is good. So whatever disrupts our peace with God, in other words, whatever makes us angry or upset, we try to keep peace by focusing on the Word of God. Next one was be thankful. <coughs> be thankful goes with be peace. Whenever something or some bad news bothers us, we try to find something to be thankful for so we could maintain our peace 
with gratitude. And then the last one was be reminded. I did not realize that at first that our three siblings, our parents, had been being together for a long time. Our three siblings, my older sister, my younger brother, and me, gathered them 14 years ago, and our whole family gathered 18 years ago. It seems like my father called our family from all over the place to unite and spend time together. It was not easy because it was a family emergency situation. My father was in the ICU for 14 days and then moved to general unit. For three days, he was unconscious, and then he woke up. It was on Saturday in Korean time, but in Eastern U.S. time, it was a Good Friday. I experienced what true Easter is like when I saw my father regain consciousness in the ICU because the doctor wasn't sure if he was going to make it. So she called the whole family. Thankfully, he recovered quickly even in the ICU. Of course, we didn't we did have some concerns about him after he woke up. As he became delusional, but after 14 days, he was moved to general unit and he was discharged from the hospital last Thursday evening in South Korean time, early Thursday morning in U.S. Eastern time, as I share with you all. Before I flew back to the U.S., my family and I had a devotion time and Holy Communion together. Since my father was still in the hospital, I searched for a private space <coughs> where my family could be together. Thankfully, the hospital where my father was hospitalized was in an Iwa University Hospital founded by Mary F. Scranton, the first female missionary in Korea. She was sent by Women's Foreign Missionary Society of the Methodist Episcopal Church. So you can see why the connection, even I was there, but still, there is a Methodist and get a connection, even through that hospital. Mary Scranton is the founder of Iwa Girls School, which is the foundation of Iwa Women's University, University in Seoul, Korea, and she is founder of Korea's first specialized hospital for women in 1887. <coughs> The foundation of Iwa Women's University Hospital in Seoul, Korea. So, the hospital had a chapel, and there was a prayer room right next the door. But it was closed because of COVID restrictions. The restrictions. Luckily, I figured I would call the chaplain and see if I could use the prayer room. And then the chaplain understood our situation and she let us use it. This was perfect timing since I wanted to have a moment with my family before I left for the States. We ended up having a worship service together in that prayer room. And 
shared the Holy Communion. It was actually the first time I had led worship and officiated the Holy Communion since I was ordained in the United Methodist Church. The whole thing felt really special, like it brought us all together in God's grace and love. As I share with you earlier, my father is still undergoing the process of recovery, and my mother and my sister are caregivers for him along the clock. In conclusion, there are times when unexpected things happen or we receive bad news in our lives. Like the story of Mary Magdalene, Jesus asked Mary, Why are you crying? Who are you looking for? The same Jesus would ask us as well. When we are distressed, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Are you looking for a dead Jesus or a living Jesus? Let us pray. Living God, Lord of God, who is with us, in us, and cares for us. Sometimes we fail to recognize you because we are searching for a bad Jesus instead of a living Jesus. O oh Lord, in the midst of trials and hardship, help us to experience your presence and your comfort. Guide us to find hope in you, not in circumstances or people. But in you alone, because you are the, the living God who loves and cares for us deeply. Thank you so much for your boundless love and grace towards us. In your mighty name, Jesus, I pray. Let us respond to God by offering ourselves in our offering. All church, please come forward for the offering. Announcements. Okay, second Sunday of the month. We donated to the United Methodist Church Mission for Worldwide Disaster Relief. And the last Sunday of the month, our mission will be for our own loaves and fishes and also for an Aaron Nagata Petrosilia mission. Uh, please sign up in the back to be a leader and a greeter and a reader and anything else we can come up with. And also the first Saturday Night Bluegrass concert is coming up with Billy Harrison and Haywire. And we can use your help, your donations, or anything else. Uh, there will be an SPRC meeting on Thursday, May 16th at 6 o'clock, followed by a church council meeting on Thursday, May 16th at 7 p.m. So please, everybody, come to the church council meeting. Any other announcements?
for the one who laid down his life for himself in witness to your love for all people. You are aware that many have not experienced the love. We see their need. We want to respond. Use what we offer to you to bring healing and peace to others. In the name of Jesus we pray. Our closing hymn, Christ the Lord, is written today, verses 1 through 3 and 6. Jesus, who conquered death.